Hello, Mr. East Leach. I, just, I know that may or may not be your actual name, but anyway, hello. And I just drew a, a, a quick little outline of what I think your house is shaped like. I've got auto roofs turned on. I'm just going to close this wall over here. And bingo, bango, that's basically the roofs over your house. That's kind of what I was talking about. <clears throat> Let me just go over here and draw an interior wall, name this garage. I'm not going to detail out the whole thing. I just wanted to illustrate what I was telling you in my post. Uh, garage, there we go. And I'll put a, a garage door over here. Whoops. I don't want to select the next item. And I'll make that... Uh, 16, I think yours is a 16 foot door. Yeah. Something like that. Might be a, yours might be an 18. In any case, here's the porch. That's kind of what I was saying. Just make it part of the house. Why work yourself to death? <clears throat> I'm going to take this wall here. Well, my porch is a little bit deeper than, than yours. Let's, let's do another interior wall here, and this will define the porch. See, it didn't change the roofs. We'll name this porch. When you name when you name use these naming conventions, it actually automatically does a few things. They're not, they're not just names. Uh, let's see, porch. When I name this porch, uh, let's go over here and look at the floor structure. It makes it automatic. When I named it porch, it gave it an an automatically uh, four inch uh, slab and made it concrete just because I named it porch. Okay, now it says porch. Now, <clears throat> what I was talking about, the wall break, wall break tools, we'll just break that off, break break that off there. And that's just to, to take this segment here away from this one and this segment away from this whole wall here. And I'm going to shift select those, open them uh, for specification, and go over to the railing tab, specify that railing. And when I said post to beam, I meant this one. And let's see, your porch doesn't have any railings, so we're going to turn the rail off. And we don't want any half posts. That would be like a little half post. It would put a half post right here and a half post right here if I didn't uncheck that. And in your case, you don't want any posts at all, so I'm going to go over to the Newells and Ballasters tab and tell that Newell, the posts in this case, to be 1 16th of an inch wide, which basically makes them in invisible. Oops, not one sixteenth. <clears throat> they don't hire me for my typing skills. Okay. Let's see. I don't think Pro can make those that post visible. Well, there's no nothing to be visible. Now you're you're work, asking about your brick column. Well, that's just too easy. Oh, well, let's just take a look at this before I, I forge ahead. Now, is that or is that not your house, basically? I mean, maybe the door is different. Obviously, you've got brick and stuff like that, but that's basically it. See what I mean about simple? Keep it simple. I'm going to leave this camera open and hit Control Tab to go back to plan. And uh, this isn't the only way to do this, but I'm going to go over here to CAD, Boxes, Rectangular Polyline, and we'll draw a, a rectangular polyline right there. I could, if I was doing this for money, I, I would carefully dimension it and so forth. But I'm just demonstrating here, so I'm going to. Take that and use this command here in the edit toolbar. See, if it, normally this thing's over here or down here, and whenever you select something, it pops up. See, it disappeared when I deselected this. When it when I selected, it pops up. Okay, now I'm going to use this command here. That's uh, <clears throat> you can see down in the taskbar. Whenever I put my hover over over something, there's a little tip down there. It says convert selected object to an architectural or terrain object. Left click. I want a slab in this case, uh, and I think uh, the default ceiling height I've got in this model is uh, eight, no, nine feet. So I'll make that 109. I, I know what eight feet. I mean nine feet is just 108, but uh, I'll make it a little bit taller, and uh, we'll make the thick. Now the thickness is that this defines the height of the slab. This defines the thickness. So right now it'll just be four inches thick starting at a height of 109 inches. I want it to 110 inches. Now, these are not written in stone. I'm just doing it fast-like. 
Control-Tab, there's a column. Uh, now, if I was drawing your house with brick, I would have drawn it with brick walls, and then you can take this object here. I don't recommend that you guys get in a habit of using a material painter and a, a material eyedropper until you've really taken the time to study the, ma the documentation on that. The best way is just to open the object, go to the Materials tab of the object, and then s assign a material to it. I don't remember if there, uh, okay, uh, I don't see any brick there. Maybe it would be red brick, which commonly, there it is. I'll just do this for this demonstration. Voila, bingo, bango, we got a brick, you know, albeit it's not your brick, you get the idea. You can assign whatever material you want, you can you draw with what it, with uh, brick walls, and you should, and that's, that's simple. And I'm not showing off, I'm not trying to belittle anyone. It's just that's how to do, that's a way to do it. It's not even the only way to do it in pro. I could do the roofs differently if I wanted to, but this is the quickest straight straightforward way to do it. Okay, thank you. Good night.